So you got Ron Gidry, Louisiana Lightning. You got Daniel Cormier, the two-division UFC champion. But now Dustin Poirier on the strength of a UFC interim lightweight title has a key to the city of Lafayette. And he will try to add to his significant legacy in this spot here tonight. The king of Lafayette, Dustin Poirier, he loves that city and he embodies everything that the city stands for. Yeah. He's tough. He's durable. He's a guy that is looking for a fight. And in the fight with Max Holloway to win the title, you saw that he's willing to go do anything to accomplish his goal. A truly special athlete is Dustin Poirier. And it's amazing to think where he was after that knockout loss to Michael Johnson in a main event in Hidalgo, Texas in 2016. Refocused, rededicated himself, and was able to produce a UFC title. All eyes on Dustin Poirier as he gets back on the same campus he had So here's the Polish lightweight contender, Mateusz Gamrod. A lot of people eventually expect to see a belt around his waist. Huge opportunity to close the gap here tonight. Well, John, he's got big goals. He's got big goals. He has big expectation for himself. But the only way you get expectation like this is to have the ability to try to go and chase that down. Gamrod has those abilities. He's a tremendous wrestler. He has unbelievable cardio, and he's a really good striker. He possesses A-plus skills, but how does he apply them tonight to get this victory over a very tough opponent. Reps American top team in South Florida. This is a former two-division KSW champion at 55 and 45. But as you know, it is UFC gold that Mataj Gamrot is after. for this lightweight championship fight. To get us started, here is Bruce Buffett. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, presenting the challenger, Dustin the Diamond Warrior. And now introducing the champion, fighting out of the red corner, ladies and gentlemen, presenting the reigning, defending UFC lightweight champion of the world. One of the best in the business, Herb Dean, is our referee tonight. All right, so here's the former UFC interim lightweight champion, Dustin Poirier, the future Hall of Famer, believed he would have a decided striking advantage in this matchup. We'll see if he can get the hands going here early in this round. Lands a big right hand early. Standing job by him here to secure the takedown early. Stylistically, we wondered how much resistance there would be. Not much on that attempt. It's very difficult to defend with a guy like this, who is so good at chaining those takedown finishes together. Once he gets to your leg, it's very hard to try and deter him from completing a takedown. Oh, Lance with the ground and pound strike. All right, side control now. We'll see if he can advance position. Working from the top here. Pretty good grounded pound here by Gamera. There it is. Now he's going to bottom. Early connection with the left from the champ. Standing over his opponent here and making these strikes count. Beautiful sequence there by Gamera. What a tight arm bar. Oh, that arm is in real trouble. He's got it isolated. He's looking to finish. Belly down on board. Oh, he got it! He actually defended. Now, he's not in a great position now, but he's better off than he was before. Big right.
right hook there by the champ. Ground and pound strike there now. These ground strikes are starting to add up. A lot of top pressure being applied here. All right, so there it is again. He's been very efficient with his ground and pound striking game tonight. And now they're starting to pile. He's starting to pile them together. Punch after punch, you're starting to land from the top position. Under three minutes now to go in the round. Gamrot's back inside control. North-south position. Come on, Carl, get your mind out of the gun. Ooh, that Kimura looks tight. Great job maintaining position over submission. Very smart. Great fight IQ. Oh, he did a great job. Oh, what a connection by him there. His opponent could be out of here soon, DC. He's done. I mean, when you get hit with a shot like that, you don't know whether to run, hide, grab, or wrestle. He's a, I mean, he's confused. He's as confused as he was on his first test. Oh, big left hook there. I would think at his disposal. Oh, he's got a ton of options. He has submission options, but I believe the safest option for him here is going to be to use his ground and pound. Build a base, posture up, throw big strikes, get back to position, we'll posture again, throw big strikes, and just really wear it. Oh, he's hurt bad. Not there. Oh, left hook to the head. Oh! That was a jab. Thirty seconds to go on the round. That was a beautiful hook. It landed perfectly, and it hurt his opponent very bad. Nice strike there, and. Oh, that appears to have opened him up. Cup man's getting excited on this. I mean, these guys are here to work. I mean, these guys are here to Watch them. They're going to work for their money. And tonight, the cut man's going to have to work for his cash. Because that cut can get nasty. Round two straight ahead. All right, so the round is over, and you see the cut man not wasting any time as the fighter makes his way back to the stool. The cut man will try to shut that cut on the bridge of his nose and prevent it from becoming a factor here moving forward. So the crowd voicing its appreciation after that round. We had a knockdown courtesy of a punch midway through. And you see, here's your highlight. It was straight. He threw him in combination and landed that big punch that really did hurt his opponent. Lesser men would have been done. He's got a tough guy in front of him. He will have to go back to this again. He will have to get back to this action if he wants to get the desired finish. Round two here. Nice one two there. And there he goes, lands another combination. His cardio is so good that, is, that it allows him to put forth this type of output in peace. When his opponent is done at two, that is a huge shot. No, and he needs to start looking to finish now because he's got his opponent hurt very bad. Oh, just open it up on him now. Oh, he lands a massive kick here. Right hand over the top. Oh. Hands up. Hands up. cheek looks like it's cut here. Starting to bleed a little bit now. Yes. 
Yes. Oh, and he escapes up to his feet. Very nice. Power right hand there from the King of Lafayette, Louisiana, Dustin Fourier. Mike Brown there in the corner has really honed Dustin's all-around game, and he certainly finds himself in the middle of his fighting. Oh, and man, the blood is flowing now. I know a lot of you like that, but he has got to figure some things out offensively or this fight's going to end. He's got to move his head, John. But the problem is, now he's got the blood to deal with. He's got the Big strike lands. Big strike lands. Now he looks to try to chase down that pitch. movement to avoid some of those strikes from the top. Gamrot swelling now around that jaw area. We'll see if he can make some adjustments and perhaps defensively raise that guard to prevent any further damage. Really good job to land these strikes from top position. Well, at this point, he's got to be way up on the judges' scorecards, clearly winning the fight and largely has gotten it done with his strike in time. Got it done with his strike. He fought well behind the jab, but it was significant strikes that really did make an impact on the judges' mind. All right, well, that blow is busting from that cut with each strike landed, and he continues to effectively target that area. You know, we are talking about a guy with a super high fight IQ. So when you give him that blood, that crimson red is nothing more than something that inspires him to continue doing what he's doing. So you have got to change something. You got to get your head moving so you're not taking too much damage to that cut. Well, some might describe this as critical condition. That eye is absolutely mangled. Oh, in good position to rip off a Kamora here. Oh, he's got the Kamora locked in. Oh, he escapes. He got out. He, wow, that is great submission defense. Now inside the closed guard. And he's going to try to find ways to pass and move to a submission. All right, so the referee right then and there has called a stop to the action. Looks like he's going to call on the doctor to look at the cut, and it is a pretty significant one, DC. Well, he's bleeding a lot, and the, the, the blood is going into his eyes. It's very difficult for him to see right now. And it looks as though it will. Just a little blood, right? It's okay. It's mixed martial arts. Looks like we're going to continue, at least for now. You ready to fight? Ready. All right, so the ringside position has made his way back to his seat. The referee gets the action back underway. The fans are excited this fight's going to continue. Absolutely, and I'm just as excited myself. I want to see these guys compete. I want to see who wins. Oh, he's had a huge strike right there. I'm not sure how many more of these his opponent can take. Massive shot that he lands. Great job. Oh, big left. Just pouring blood all over his face, all over the canvas. That gash is terrible. So bad, we might even get a stoppage here. We'll see. Kick to the ball. You heard him again. Nice job by Dustin Fourier there. Sticks the target and then moves his head off the center line to avoid the combination. Head off the center line. He watched from the counter with that beautiful straight left that he throws over and over. 30 seconds to go. And there's a takedown attempt. Well, this is absolutely the hurt business. It's hard to see which party is more injured, but I think both fighters have been really affected with their strikes. Yeah, both guys have been affected. Both guys have been beat up. It's a very competitive fight. Let's see who has the heart to carry them through these very tough moments. Two. Heading back to the corner now after that round. 
Poirier's eye is in real trouble, folks. That does not look good. I wouldn't be at all surprised to see the ringside position be called on here. He might even stop the fight. We'll see. All right, let us now get you some replays of all the damage done in that previous round, including the strike that opened up the cut. Yeah, some nasty strikes landed over the course of that round, and it opened up a nasty cut. He has got to find a way to change some things defensively, or that cut is just going to get worse and worse. And the worse it gets, the more he runs the risk of this fight getting stopped. You ready to fight? Ready. Go. All right, here we go with this third round of this championship fight. So he's really starting to put together some significant body shots here. These are going to take their toll as this fight goes up. Hook shot attempt to the head here instead. It's blocked by Gamera. All right, big storyline starting to develop. Really starting to gap wide open as this fight continues. And you can watch him. You see him. His opponent in a world of trouble. Such a sneaky head kick he did not recognize it. Just coming high. was just a gorgeous shot to end the fight right there. I'm not even sure the opponent really saw it coming. So back to the drawing board for him. But for the winner, this is certainly exactly what he was looking for here tonight. Let's get it inside of Bruce Buffer. He has the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, the referee Herb Dean has called us off to this contest at 44 seconds of the third round. Declaring the winner by knockout and still the undisputed UFC lightweight champion. So there he is, the skilled UFC lightweight champion of the world. A lot of steam here during fight week that maybe there were a few things that could plague him tonight. Looked as good as ever for my mind. He looked as good as he's ever looked 